Hello, my name is Katie Evans, and I am in my second year of bioinformatics at the University of Calgary and part of Second Life for our iGEM team. I'm mainly working behind the scenes in our virtual lab, bringing functionality to the lab materials in order for users within Second Life to learn about the techniques used in the lab, as well as perform them themselves. I suppose I'll introduce some of the scripting involved with making the activities function. The events I have been using most in the Linden scripting language are state entry, touch start, changed, and listen. One of the most important functions I've been using, although I'm sure others within Second Life have used something similar, is a function to get a list of the inventory within an object. Avatars may be given permission to drop objects or note cards, thankfully not scripts, into the objects and then the object's inventory can be checked to see what it contains, like lab materials for activities done in the lab, for example which it needs to have knowledge about. One method I've been using when I know exactly what I want the object to be looking for is taking a list of objects that I would like to look for and classifying them as either non-existent or as an object, which are both represented by LSL constants that can be searched for within an object's inventory. If something that is required does not exist, then you may give out hints about the object once you determine what object is missing by using conditionals. One of the things that this is useful for is the restriction digest activity, which is a lot like the PCR machine that also uses it. But it's a little different in that one of it is one of the activities that uses the changed event and can guide you as you add things to the test tubes where order is important. As of now, I have it checked the order within the inventory so everything has to be alphabetical, which is something I may consider changing in the future. So as you can see, if I were to add buffer, don't really pay attention to the names right now since they're really general, it will, the tube that is, uh, tell me that the addition was correct and that I can continue. But if I add, let's say, the circuit part when I'm supposed to add a restriction enzyme, to the tube, it will tell me that my restriction digest will be ruined if I continue and the tube will change its color. Something that has recently become really important to the lab is increasing the intuitiveness of the activities enough to reduce any possible confusion so that users may focus on why the activities themselves are useful and important, and not just how they're supposed to be accomplished. Some of the instructions for how to operate adding inventory, for example, can be taught on the introductory island you may have seen in the last video. But as you can see, basic instructions are also being added to the lab. So you can see explanations for the different areas for restriction digest. 
and they should have the areas they talk about glow, although due to the re resolution of my computer you cannot see it at this time. I guess I will show you what I have for bacterial transformation, which is more of a quiz and still requires some instruction throughout it, as well as some instructions after each material is added. So I can add component cells, which you can see within the inventory if we just wait for it to load. You can see they have been added already. And it, now if you click the test tube, you'll get a series of questions about the competent cells and the meter beside it, which also looks like a test tube, will fill up as I answer them. And it, this can be reset at any time. With the constant addition of things to objects, I have also made a cleaning script, which can filter out anything that is not needed within the object, and it is functioning at this time within the PCR machine. And this uses the changed event for changed inventory. Everything that is within a conditional is something that you want to be kept within the inventory. Anything else will be removed that it finds. And we'll just ignore that for now. The scripts I have made so far are by no means complete and are continually being modified and added to in order to suit the requirements of the lab activities and make them increasingly intuitive uh, for those performing these lab techniques for the first time. And the theory behind some of the processes such as building the circuits within the lab will be introduced and practiced thoroughly using the HUD that Patrick is working on. And he will be showing its current capabilities as well as some other cool things he has made next week. So I hope to have a chance to show you some more of my work completed later. Thanks for your time.